Jan, hello, hello, Danto and Ramuta. Thank you very much for joining us, Professor. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, you know, Wi-Fi is not good, but we're here. <laughs> well, I mean, as as at least as far as you are concerned, you look good on the screen. So I think that's the most important thing. Uh, Danton, I look forward to a long conversation with you. Uh, but for today, I know you have a very tight schedule, so we'll keep it short by our standards. But hopefully, we'll have a longer one now. Obviously, when it comes to you, there's so many things that we can talk about. We can talk about Dunsa, uh, you, you know, your life as a writer, as a as a literature and and English professor. You man against the gentleman. Maybe we can talk talk about that uh, a little bit later on, but more masinsin na pagsusuri sa susunod na mga kabanata. But today, I want to start first with uh, you know, since it's the Pride Month, no, we we thought that it's perfect to have someone like you. I mean, if if there's anyone in the Philippines that we should first go to. Uh, to discuss the Pride Month, perhaps you're the person because uh, you have been at the forefront of the LGBTQ uh, rights movement, not for the past year, not for the past decade, for but for quite some time. Even if, of course, you're very young, I'm I'm, I'm just saying that you're a pioneer. <laughs> not I'm not asking your age on the record. So, Danton, uh, first of all, can you tell me a little bit about uh, your background before we go into um, understanding bakat ka nagfound ng lad lad party list? And, and the evolution of the LGBTQ movement in the Philippines for the uh, purpose of our audience. So, Danton, especially mga medyo mas yeah. na who are more curious about you. <laughs> yeah, in 1989, I got a British Council grant to study in the UK. So, I chose publishing because publishing was uh, destroyed by the Marcos government uh, during the previous year. So, I went there. And then I saw that, oh, the, the LGBT groups here are open, they're on campus, they're not embarrassed, they're not ashamed. So I began reading uh, LGBT books. When they came back to the Philippines, I was looking for books, but there were none. And there were no LGBT groups. So I joined a group called the library. The library is still there in Malati. It's a, it's a sing-along bar, no? And they have an LGBT group, so I joined them. And then later, I founded Katlo. Katlo doesn't mean third sex. No, it meant third alternative or third option. And then in 1994, Neil Garcia and I started Lad Lad, the, the Gay Anthology, which was a bestseller. So that started. Is the my, professor, uh, the, 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 of course, the other well known professors. Uh, yeah. Kind of, uh, it's. Uh, Comparative Literature sa uh, University of the Philippines de Liman, no, of course, Neil Garcia. Neil Garcia. And then later, when uh, we were talking with the Bayan party list about an LGBT rights bill, so I had a meeting with, I remember them, eh? I had a meeting with the lawyer, one lesbian, and one yeah, yeah. artist. Yeah, group, but Percy was too young. Percy was still in college then. Sila ano to, Malumarin, Jack Hernandez, and attorney Venir Cuico, so we wrote a draft of the first LGBT rights bill in the Philippines and we gave it to Akbayan because they were the ones who won in 1998 and they adopted it and filed it but until now it's not yet uh, passed in the Senate. It has been passed in Congress I think three times but not in the Senate. So you know Richard, I was an uh, un unwitting uh, LGBT rights spokesperson. I was covering the first LGBT rights march in 1994. There were only 30 people in Quezon City Circle. I joined them as a journalist for the Manila Chronicle. I was covering it and then suddenly Father Mickley, who died last year, said, oh, Blanto Rimoto will speak now. And I was so shocked because all the TV crew and camera were there. And I I had to speak as a writer of a gay anthology. So in the beginning, you know, Richard, nobody wanted to speak, no? Like Mel and Jay in uh, GMA7, they invited me. And I asked uh, people around, they said, yeah, you should speak because they need someone who's uh, a teacher, you know, who has studied these things and who is generally sober, no? Generally sober and calm. That's, that's, that started my... Advocacy in 1996, and then in 2003, we started the uh, Lad Lad, no, of uh, for the sole purpose of passing the LGBT rights bill, which of course until now 30 uh, 20 years later is not yet passed, no. 
So I was uh, unwitting because, you know, I, I was a very quiet person. I was very quiet, always behind the scenes. But uh, you know what happened? That when one of my friends, who he tried to kill himself in college, he said that one day, because he was gay and he couldn't accept it, right? So one day he was at home with his parents and he saw me on the re- on television talking about LGBT rights. And then he and his father who didn't communicate before, began talking about LGBT lives. And he told me, you know what you did in this country? You turned LGBT rights into a discussion for parents on the dinner table. So that I think that's the best compliment almost I had. Because I didn't, yeah, almost there. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, because I didn't, you know, when be like you, when you speak in public, you don't know the effect you have on people, right? Later, only when you get feedback or when people talk to you or email you or bash you, do you know the feedback that or the kind of influence that you have. So I continue that by writing gay columns for the past 30 years, books, and then, of course, my novel, River Ram. And then later, you know what, Richard, I was even uh, an unpaid. No, I didn't ask to be paid. I was a consultant in several LGBT movies where my input was to make the LGBT films less about gay bars and more about relationships between parents and uh, lovers and friends. I tried to make it a human issue and not, uh, you know, like, there's nothing wrong with sex, of course, but many of the LGBT films dealt only with commercial sex. So with all these producers, I told them, because we don't always... I mean, we don't go to gay bars every night. I went there in my whole life twice no, to accompany friends. So we have other lives. We deal with our parents, our families, our friends. So I think my, my work really was to make LGBT life as commonplace and as quote normal as possible. Uh- Danton, um, just a question there. Um, what was the uh, eureka moment that you felt now you have to do something about this, that you cannot just be you know, on the sidelines, that you have to actively take part in advocating for uh, more rights? I mean, did you have a Harvey Milk moment or was there a Harvey Milk before you? Or are you the Harvey Milk of, of the Philippines? Sorry for, for the Western parallelism. I just, because I mean, for, for us, quote unquote, outsiders, no, I mean, we we our understanding is that in the U.S. Harvey Milk p- played a very important role thanks to Sean Penn in terms of pushing the envelope. Uh, are you like the Harvey Milk of the Philippines? W- was that the Eureka moment? You know, I I I was uh you know I, I had models before like um well uh, we were asking of course when election time came because they're always looking for election. Uh, gay candidates for the elections. I was we were pushing um Soxi Tupasho, who was a UP educated uh director, but he didn't want to run for congressman of their district, and we were pushing uh, for Ricky Reyes. I even talked to Ricky, he didn't want. And then my dear friend Boy Abunda, so these were my uh, the people I look up to. I boy said I he'd rather work for television and maybe later work in government, but not now, no, because he was taking care of his sick mother. And then Bernardo, Bernardo, the late director. So there were several people who were ahead of me and we wanted them to run for public office or lead the group. But they always said that it needs someone as patient, (laughs) as patient and as kind as me. Because I know, you know, Richard, we're teachers, we're very patient, no? Exactly. You take a lot of shit from people and then just smile because, you know, that's the way it is. No, you cannot always be, uh, um, you know, you cannot have always be have an acidic tongue because you will alienate people. So Eureka moment was one was when my friend told me that it became a um, dinner table issue. The others, Richard, when I go around the country and I talk to the poor LGBTs, there are many of them, no? gay fishermen and gay farmers and gay construction workers. Magugulat ka, ang dami namin, you know? yes, and of course, yes. lesbians. No? Mm-hmm. They, yeah, they, they tell me, and they don't look like the stereotype. No, These lesbians are lipstick lesbians. They look like beauty queens. And these gay men are, you know, parang mga, you know, like movie stars. No, 
they tell me that uh, that we should keep on pushing the envelope and then they tell me that uh, they, they thank me. I'm not talking about me, but many other people with me. I'm just one of many people in many groups that they said, now, you know, we can talk about um, LGBT issues in the Philippines. We have gay movies. We have boys love, boys love our movies and TV shows that deal with with LGBT lives. Even a famous person producer of streaming um, pretty script now because they said it's relevant and of course it will be profitable for them. So LGBT lives have become ordinary even in, in Mahala Ala Mukaya, even in uh, Mel, in Sioni Mel, no? in GMA, uh, even in Kapuso Mo, Jessica Soho, the show of uh, Rated K, Corina. All these major shows have dealt with the LGBT issues with sympathy and understanding. So it took us, I think, 30 years to be where we are. A full uh, generation. Um, no? where we are treated with more respect and understanding. Yeah. And you know, the Pride March last Sunday in Quezon City, Moir Circle, there were 100,000 people compared to 33 in 1994. So that's the 100,000, but only in Quezon City. But you have to remember the Pride Marches were done in major cities all over the Philippines. There was one in Makati, in Baguio, etc. I think there were 10 to 15 simultaneous pride marches in major cities, maybe with around 200,000 people no? last Sunday. Um, uh, Danton, I mean, uh, I just wanted to ask you a question because you're quite a cosmopolitan person, right? Uh, you have traveled around, you're a writer. Um, from a comparative perspective, what is your understanding ng kalagayan ng mga LGBTQ plus dito sa Pilipinas? Kumpara dun sa mga ibang kapit oh. na bansa. Kasi, just to tell, again, as an outsider, like my understanding is, I, I lived in other parts of Asia and I realized compared sa kanila, maybe not Thailand, right? Uh, medyo mas bukas yeah. tayo sa LGBTQ community, not on the yeah. political legal level, but on the social, cultural, everyday anthropology level. Uh, uh, was there was that the kind of gap you saw that has to be bridged, or maybe maybe we us outsiders are not appreciating actually many microaggressions that you people were uh, that your folks the LGBTQ folks were 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 suffering from. Because from the outside, ang tingin namin actually the Philippines quite tolerant kompara dun sa marami uh, kapit pa Again, I can only think of Thailand for instance as a relatively more open country, but even yeah. that people, right? Can you tell me your as a cosmopolitan writer, thinker, educator, what is your understanding of nung kalagayan ng ating LGBTQ community sa Pilipinas? I can I can tell you a very very brief story. Like twenty years ago, I was in Malaysia and then later in Thailand. I got an Asian scholarship grant for two years to study Asian literature. So in Malaysia, I met uh, it's still there, no, a Pink Alliance group. And we had a meeting and they said, oh, one day they said, we Malaysians, you want to form and edit a gay anthology. Like you in the Philippines, this was 2003. Do you have gay anthology, one gay anthology? I happened to be carrying the like five of the gay books I did. So I showed it to them that led one, two, and three. Their eyes were like popping out of their sockets, no? Sabi na, oh my God. So I gave them the books. no. And then in Singapore, uh, I met some teachers. This was 2004. I met them. But you know what happened? But things have changed in Singapore now. We're talking about the year 2004. We met. And then the next day, I got an email uh, from a government agency telling me, Professor Emoto, please refrain from talking to Singaporeans about political issues because this violates your professional visa. So I was shocked, Richard, who among those five gay men I talked to was a spy for the government. Grabe, no? But now, to their credit, Singapore just passed. Uh, I was reading about it last night. Or removed the uh, English era kind of this. Removed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They removed. Now gay men can have sex without going to jail because it was a British uh, era law. Now they can do, of course, behind in the privacy of their rooms, no, or houses. They can have sex, but not women. So times have changed, no. Uh, in in Thailand, of course, Thailand is different because their culture is not as forbidding as ours. So we're not bad, no. But uh, again, that's how I explained it to the Comelec when in 2010 they didn't want us to run because you know what they said, like you, Danton, 
I mean, you're a teacher in Ateneo, Enrique Reyes is rich, and Boya Bunda is rich. And I said, you marginalized. Uh, dear, yeah, dear commissioners, these, we are the exceptions to the rule. No, As I said earlier, if you go around the country, uh, there are more poor gay people. And they can only be working in the beauty parlors if they're a gay man, or they can be working only as bus conductors or security guards if they're women, because they cannot do other work. That that's not quote unquote appropriate for their sexual orientation. So I was running. I said Landad was running on a platform of livelihood, and then greater opportunities. Because even in Quezon, we had a case. You no, know, we went to court. There was one transgender who was raped. It was it wasn't successful. So it became sexual assault. One counselor mashed her breast and wanted to have sex with her. So she she and the waiters you no know, fought him off. We filed the case. We won. No, administratively he was suspended for six months without pay. But criminally we, he could not be sued because the criminal courts, the criminal law say one man cannot sexually assault another mm. man. So we, Ruby Kreya, even if she's transgender, no, no, she had underwent sexual reassignment surgery. She was still considered a man. So we we had a lot of cases in the last twenty five years. We generally won, no, Richard, but uh, at the end of the day, there were still barriers we could not cross, no, or as they say, pink ceiling, no. That's why the struggle continues until now, twenty twenty three. Um, uh, Professor Ramon, are, 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 I mean, I, I'm reading a book about by John Seidel. It's about the revolutions in Southeast Asia and in Sinisabinya. Now, one of the challenges during the Illustrada time was how to create, you know, a kind of a bridge between the bourgeoisie, cosmopolitan, illustrado class, and then on the other hand, yung masa. No? So depending on whom binabasa mo, pag sila ileto, binasa mo, sabi, uh... ang revolusyon ay talaga Bonifacio, <laughs> the whole Agoncillo line. And then the more Benedict Anderson line, etc., looks at the role of the, of the cosmopolitan. But this book is fantastic because it looks at how the two came together because of broader development in the international system. You know, the awakening of revolutionary movements, national movements around the world. I was just thinking if the same framework can also apply. Now, siempre ikaw, I mean, you're you're part of the elite. I mean, I don't know if you can I can say illustrados of the LGBTQ movement, but you are absolutely correct when you say the Kailandin and grassroots movement and and to bridge them. But my sense is yeah. globally also there is a move towards greater recognition of the rights, including the Supreme Court case in the U.S., of course, uh, towards the end of the Obama era that affirmed the sex, the sex union. How are these three connected, or are they coming together? Base dun sa pag-intindi over three decades of 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 advocacy. You know, Richard, my name is now in the law books because uh, when the Commission on Elections didn't want us to run, I went to court. No, I went to court, and it's so funny. I cannot name names. No, it's so funny because uh, even malakanyang lawyers wanted. To my friends in this young lawyers in Malacanya, Danton, you want to join your case, we'll defend you, but don't put our names. No, we will. I mean, everybody rallied. No, the Jesuits were with me and the Malacanang lawyers, the Al Akbayan lawyers, the Bayan Muna, even the military. I grew up in the military, Richard. So, military lawyers wanted to yes, help me we can talk behind about. the scene. Yeah, because you know, I mean, I. And then, of course, the left, no? So I said, oh, my God, what, what happened here? Why, why am I uniting all these forces? <laughs> so I sat down and with the lawyers and we filed a case. I, I did the final editing of the, of the brief in the Supreme Court, and we won. We were allowed to run, but only one month before the elections. But that was important because that was the first legal victory we had. And it showed, and as Casa Tour said, and Tita Eta was telling me, Nako, Danton, only you could unite us in one table. <laughs> I said, because you're my personal friends, you have to help me. We don't have a lot, we don't have a lot of money, right? And then even, of course, I told you, even the, and the Catholic Church, Richard, I cannot name names, but where did they, when you were allowed to run twice, where did I put the campaign materials? You know, one of the storerooms was the some of the storerooms were the were the offices of the of the churches, no? The parish priest told me, Oh, you can keep your campaign materials here, and then you can get your tell your staff to get the campaign, the tarpaulin and campaign materials. 
It's all right, Danto. Now, the doctrine is saying that, but we are supporting you behind the scenes. So it's always behind the scenes, Richard. So that's good, no? I think Informal. I think it took us yeah twenty years, maybe because of as you said, my you know I I admit no because I went to school in Ateneo, of course, and then I grew up in the military. I have so many friends up there, no? But but uh, I never used any of them, but they were always willing to help. And then the Catholic Church, you know, I have I've met many nor many priests and nuns and bishop. Even Archbishop Cruz, one time, Oscar Cruz was telling me, he embraced me and told me, you know, Danton, one day all the things you're fighting for in God's good grace, he will give it to you. I mean, this Archbishop Oscar Cruz not telling me but that, that our doctrine no doesn't hope, allow right? it. I mean, but... you had no less than Pope Francis saying during his, this yeah. is to Brazil, right? Where he said, who am I yeah. to do right? That ultimately it's up to, to the Almighty to decide on you know, who's worthy of his love. Yeah. And That's yeah. why I was, yeah, I was so shocked because of course the guy is a Jesuit, no? So you know how they are. <laughs> so I was happily shocked. But when he said that, did you see the backlash in the Philippines? Even the, even not all, a few people in the Catholic Church you mean the, the Pope castigated Francis. the yeah, Pope. Yeah, yeah. Pope Francis, yeah. So I, I can you imagine, I had to defend the Pope. <laughs> Yeah, I remember the Ratzinger people. No? Yeah, I mean, there are people who will cite Ratzinger, right? The previous pope, no? To 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 kind of counter. I, I remember yeah. very well. So suddenly there was a situation. All of us were debating. We're joining the Catholic debates. I mean, that was that was. I mean, this is 2015, yeah. 15, mga ganun, di ba? Yeah. Yeah, and they were saying pa, that the pope that was uh, badly translated. And so I had to write a column, and then they even said New York Times was wrong in translation. So I had to write a column and explain to them that 20 years ago, I was an intern in the New York Times. I was a fact checker. Our job as fact checkers was to check the facts against two or three books. no? And then yeah. beh beside me were the translators and Richard. Yeah, their PhDs. I mean, you know, their PhDs in Spanish literature and everything, and I have a PhD in English. So we're double checking and fact checking. I said, New York Times cannot be wrong because it's fact checkers were like three layers, no? So it cannot be wrong translation. And then they shut up, no? Because uh, when I said I had the personal experience, you please don't, uh, please don't create lies no and fake news against the pope let us talk about the issues no so i think that died down later no mm -hmm. you know how in the philippines after a week the new cycle changes no right right um going back to this issue uh Dandan, can you give us an uh, idea of what do you think are the kind of a critical junctures? I mean, for instance, if you look at the civil rights movement in the U.S., no, uh, you know, Montgomery, assassination of JFK. I mean, God forbid. I mean, but I mean, uh, what are the just to? I mean, what going to too much scholars? I'm sure there's going to be a book analysis of that. There already. Yeah. Any yeah. critical junctures? Dito sa 30 years arc of advocacy that you're talking about. You know, the critical junctures, we can talk about political in the Philippines. Um, uh, unfortunately, we were lobbying with the late president. No, you know, he was my schoolmate, but it was so difficult. It was easier. So I'll, this will be controversial, but I'll say this anyway, Richard. Since your show number is controversial. <laughs> I am controversial, with the as someone said. President. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know that, no? <laughs> That's why I said yes to you, no? I only say yes to a few interviewers now, no? Ikaw kasi ibang, ibang bibig mo. <laughs> well, a teacher to teacher, so right? Duterte, teacher to teacher. <laughs> so, in all honesty, President Duterte, no? President Duterte, through Pantaleon, Congressman Alvarez, he was a guest in my show. Early on during the term of President Duterte, I was so shocked. <laughs> Because he was on a national national radio and television live when he said, "Alam mo Danton, oto sa akin ni Presidente, di ba? She was the one of the uh, higher ups in the Congress. Ay ipasa na yung bill niyo. Gusto ng ni Presidente magpakasal na kayo. 
So I told uh, Congressman Alvarez, thank you, sir. But I think let's start with the rights first, no? The because if you talk about marriage, we'll go against the Catholic Church and we don't want to do that. Eh, sabi niya, okay din yan kasi kami naman talaga binabangga namin ng Catholic Church, no? That was, you know, Congressman Alvarez and President Duterte. So that's one watershed moment, not because I'm pro-Duterte or anti. I'm but, just telling you that for the first that, time that was that the was president. The thing, right? That was what? the weird thing, no? Na parang huh? na Duterte had both a Trump side and a Bernie Sanders side. I mean, if I could put it that way, no? <laughs> I mean, how true it is. Because um, I've been in Davao, no? and they told me, actually, it's a Davao, yung policies yeah. ni Digong. At even Sarah, yeah. who are LGBTQ friendly, yeah, yeah. para dun sa ibang LGBTQ. Yeah. Can you, can you, is that, is that true? Is that fake news? What's going on there? I'll explain to Sorry. you everything in the Philippines. Yeah, you're right. No, Everything in the Philippines, Richard, is personal. You know why? Some of President Duterte's and Sarah's closest, you know, Close, let's let's make it uh, some of the people they work with no in, in the in the city hall and everything. I know some of them, no, they're gay, no. So they had a lot of gay employees, trusted ones, and uh they they really opened up no spaces for LGBT discourse in Davao, no. Like there's a uh, there's there's an ordinance in Davao, it's anti-discrimination, no. You cannot discriminate against LGBTs in Davao, in the workplace, and in the schools. You'll go to jail. It's a law in the city of Davao, no? along with maybe now 30 other cities in the country. So our strategy was to, again, it's very Marxist, is to surround the country with cities and towns that have pro-LGBT laws and ordinances because the national lawmakers in Congress and the Senate have not done it. So we have around 30 cities and towns now. Quezon City, Manila, Olongapo, Baguio, Ligaspi, General Santos, Davao, Zamboanga, Cebu, no? where LGBTs can live and work freely. So that's our second, uh, uh, you can call it milestone. And third is what, you know, what media has done, either it's media or social media. And you know, both of us are with media. That's why, and it, I think it's also good that I was I've been here for like thirty years with various newspapers. They are, you know, it's like a mafia. We're kind to each other. <laughs> like when they're attacking you, I was supporting you. No, I mean, you know, and I'm sure you when people were attacking me, other friends of were course, supporting course, me. Yeah, yeah. Solidarity yeah. in the editing tables. Ganun eh. Yeah, there's, that's why they, they say nga Philippine media is a mafia. I think it's a good mafia naman because you try to help each other. So media, oh, and social tayo, media na, especially na, within... <laughs> Kaya hindi na ako lumalabas in public. Press oh my map. God. No? I really choose my interviews. That's why uh, social media and media I think have helped convey the message to the rest of the Filipinos that uh, it's time for change, not for uh, so that that's what President Duterte did, and now uh, we we don't know we're watching uh, President Marcos Jr. Although I mean Senator I mean on several occasions has voice support, no, and of course the other people in the Senate, no Senator Risa, Chisa Scudero, Coco Pimentel, no, these are our supporters in the Senate, no. Uh, I think five of them, no. So we have. The, you know, the only ones against our, us now are the father and son team of Joel. And Joel is a personal friend of mine of like many, many years, no? So when Joel says in public, I have many gay personal friends, I'm sure he's talking about me, no? Yeah. But I tell him, but Joel, you're a lawmaker. You're a lawmaker, no? Please don't use the Bible as a source of your law because and not everyone is a Christian in the Philippines. There are small but noisy minority led by the father and son team. Alam mo sa ano, when you, when you do a body count in Congress, when you count them in Congress in the Senate, we have more supporters than oppositioners, oppositionists Pero on the LGBT rights. Minority, you're saying that they're organized minority. Is, is there kind of like a double movement na as the LGBTQ movement gain momentum para my Backlash or my counter mobilization in that sense, especially with the rise of certain religious groups politically. No, because the Catholic Church major like we withdraw as a political. Ano eh? I mean, the yeah. is not there anymore like before. 
But there are many alternative religious groups who are very, very influential politically and electorally, right? Do you think that that has also to do with the backlash or counter mobilization? Is there kind of a double movement, two step forward, one step it's back? It's just the ano, yeah, it's just the fundamentalist churches because the Aglipayans are with us. The election of Cristo hasn't spoken against us. No, as always very careful, the INC, and then of course the the other Protestant churches are supporting us, no? And uh, yung sa Islam, they've talked to me, no? The Datus have talked to me. I've, I know many Datus. They've talked to me privately. They told me, support you, but, you know, our religion. And I said, yes, Datu, I understand because I studied Islam for two years. It's okay, no, if you can support us, but please do not... Uh, do not antagonize. They said, no, 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 we will not uh, demonize or antagonize. So if you go to Mindanao, there are only very few instances of gay men being harassed because even the leaders and the datos, because they have gay relatives. So everyone has a gay relative. no. So it's in the Philippines, I said earlier, it's more it's the personal. Everything is political, more yeah? personal. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, you know, Richard, when um, Sonny Trillanes was in the Senate, these are Bicolanos, I'm from Bicol. Sani Trillanes, Laila de Lima, lahat siya, no? Gringo Hunasan, yung mga macho na yan. I talked to them and they were willing to support the gay rights bill because of me as a fellow Bicolano. So when you talk to these lawmakers on a personal basis, it's not difficult. It's not difficult to pass an LGBT rights bill. Unfortunately, si Risa nga nahihirapan kasi konti lang sila. And then Joel is so noisy and the dad, si Joel pa walk out, walk out pa. So dramatic, no? And the dad is also very noisy and congressman abante. But ko konti lang talaga sila, no? I, I think if you do a survey now, we're not talking about uh, marriage, no? If you're talking about the LGBT rights bill, the SOGI bill, Maybe it's 60-40 now. No? 60 for it and 40 against it. It has moved. The needle has moved. No? Um, Danton, what is the soja bill all about for those who are not very familiar? Because the unfortunate image na mimify na siya, no? Like uh, you could see in popular yeah. oh, you see soji yan. I like it became a byword for folks from the but what is the soji bill all about? This is about equal rights, equal recognition before the constitution, right? And 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 in, and any uh, mga roots netong uh, proposed na batas na yan? What are the jurisprudential uh, yeah. precedents, etc.? Yeah. The ro- the roots of that are 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 simply put. The roots of that are really we 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 have an anti discrimination bill, no discrimination in the workplace and in the schools, getting of license, practicing practicing a profession. Yen yung ginawa namin noong 1998 that was filed by Akbayan. And of course, my version of Bayan Muna and then Senator Grace Paul, Senator Miriam was our staunch defender and Senator Raul Rojo, lahat yan, kampi sa amin, no? And through the years, in the last 20 years, especially in the West, it has widened, no? So when you say, no, because when you say anti-discrimination bill for lesbians and gays, isipin ng tao, yung lesbian, ah, siya yung ano, bus conductor, kung doktor sa bus, okay, security guard, but there are lesbians who are, as we say, lipstick lesbians, no? straight-looking. And there are lesbians who are old, no? And there are lesbians who are indigenous people, no? So, nilawa ka nila yung... Spectrum talaga, ng, spectrum. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're now looking at the in, the links, no? Interlinks, no? Hindi lang, da, hindi lang lesbian, kasi meron ding gay, no? Meron ding gay na, hindi naman lahat kamukha ni Tita Ricky Reyes, no? Meron din mga macho, meron matatanda, Merong straight acting, no? So, yung the so- sexual orientation and gender identity, it means that lahat ng nasa spectrum kay straight acting, kay may asawang lesbian, may asawang gay, indigenous people, matanda, lahat yan covered. It's a bit difficult. For me personally, you know, uh, Richard, it's a bit difficult to right. pass because it's so broad. Kaya nga ako, I was pushing for the first anti-discrimination bill sa workplace sa schools, getting of licenses, because we talk na to the congressmen and senators like five to ten years ago, payag na sila. Even Tito Soto, payag siya sa ganon. Tito Soto is so anti-soji, no? but he said, he told me, daan ko, kung trabaho, bibigay namin, pero masyado naman itong malawak, parang nag-intercut na siya. 
at saka masyadong western i see he said no so i was telling uh, the proponents if he can go back to the drawing table and uh, maybe file a simpler bill that will not antagonize like baby steps baka we can make it but we're not in power no so ladla did not win no if ladla won he would have filed a uh, a less comprehensive but i think more doable bill because we've talked to the congressmen and the senators payag sila pag employer pag employment pag trabaho pag pag-aaral pag lisensya kunyari doktora doctor businessman the basics first no can you But, enumerate uh, one, what are the like, core elements of the sogi bill uh, i mean are we talking as far as same sex union for instance or no no okay, okay, okay. Uh, same sex union or marriage equality is not part of the sogi bill no wala yan sa aming pinag- i told i told joel wala yan but he said later the ipo file namin yan I told Joel because yeah, I went to law school. Because equal protection before constitution, parang yun yung argument sa US, di ba? Yeah. That's why so I'm we, we told na, sabi nga nila, why are we protecting the LGBT? It's because they're marginalized. No? The law gives equal protection to everyone. Sabi nila, but if you protect the LGBT, paano na yung majority? No, the majority is already protected. The heterosexual majority. Kaya natin tinataas kasi hindi sila protected. So we're just giving equal rights to everyone, no? Hindi siya we're not giving special rights to anyone. Walang walang spe- at saka walang marriage. Kung magpapakasal man sila, sabi ko nang ganyan, magpapakasal sila sa huwes, no? Hindi sila pwedeng magpakasal sa simbahan kasi against yung Catholic Church, no? Against yung ibang religion. Yeah. Uh, that's called domestic part. It's a different law, domestic partnership law. Wala pa rin tayong ganyan dito, no? Uh, so medyo so, minimalist ang SOGI bill. Uh, you're saying it's actually minimalist as it is because it doesn't cover same-sex union, civil union among... Uh, because because uh, ako, we're not going to win if we... Uh, even if you look at the surveys until last year, uh, the LGBT groups want win and the soji bill will never pass if there is a uh, marriage equality provision no sa totoo lang sabi nga lang kami ng LGBT sa Philippines ano pa nga kami politically behave no we're not asking moderate. for the moon. Yeah, yeah. moderate moderate because we know the catholic church is very strong and uh, we just want basic you no know, rights to live to work to uh to get have a license to be able to study yun lang hinihingi namin no as of now wala namang wala wala pa mga kasal no wala It's so far away no so far off um uh, danton uh, later on, i want to talk about the lad lad party list and what are the plans what is the dynamics ahead but before that there are two things that we discussed one is the influence of the west and and the second one is moderate so i assume there are more radical elements can you tell us a little bit about that because Uh, I, I heard with other movements, I mean, even populist movements, no, kung may, may Duterte, my Trump, you know what I'm saying? So is there also that dynamic whereby the LGBTQ movement in America and in the West is, is in your opinion, influencing or some would say excessively influencing its counterparts here? And then how that's feeding into the supposed moderate versus radical kind of dynamics? Because all civil rights movements have always a kind of a Malcolm X to a, you know, Uh, Dr. King kind of dynamics, right? Uh, I, I'm just trying to explain this, you know, for a much more uh, broader audience. Can you give me your yeah. Um, that? Yeah. Like, you know, like, you're you right. Are attacked by some as being not radical enough, as being, I don't know, sell yeah. off like that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, I can answer you by re- talking about, in 1998, I went to a world, world conference on LGBT rights in Amsterdam. And the conference, there were only two people, two groups of people talking, the British and the Americans. So I stood up and then the delegation from India, the leader stood up and then we, we of course, me in my, you know, my usual diplomatic, gentle and nice way, I said that with all due respect, no, I think we have to hear the voices of non-American and non-British here because there are different ways of struggle in the LGBT. Can, can we hear from the Indians and from the Filipinos? Because all of you have been talking for 30 minutes and you've been debating what, what is the better. No, there is no better way because 
what ha what's happening to your country is not completely applicable to us, no? I said in the Philippines, so I spoke for like five minutes. In the Philippines, we have the, the class context. No, I'm speaking as an educated person from a Jesuit university who went to school in the U.S. and in the U.K. But there are many, many other LGBTs in the Philippines who cannot find jobs or practice their profession because they are LGBTs. No, so there, there's the class component. And 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 uh, and you're right because I um I'm 60 years old now. No, that's my real age. Although of course I know I look young. I'm 60 years old, and uh, I keep on telling the young people that um if we can only like I'm telling them, look, now you can hold hands in public and have parties and everything. 30 years ago, we could not even do that. No, we could not even do that. So what I'm saying is now we're appreciate, on television, that, on glass radio, up. in the cinema, in books, no? We have a lot of supporters now in politics and everything, but we have to choose our political battles. We cannot win if we propose a bill with marriage equality. Later, I said later, if we pass the SOGI bill or the anti-discrimination bill, maybe later, we can ask for a marriage equality bill in the courts, no domestic partnership. Yung sa West, no? Maybe later, but not now. No, let's look. You know, let's, I keep on telling them, look at the big picture. What we have now is we didn't have 30 years ago. So kayo mga bata, I keep on telling them, masaya naman kasi yung, ano, yung LGBT Pride March, but and this again controversial. What I just noticed in the last Pride Marches, it's less political, Richard. No, they keep on selling these nice things, no, mm. the banner and the button and the cap and the shirt. But there's no discussion in depth about issues. There's no discourse. There's no political discussion. That's why I um I just attended, but I miss the days twenty years ago when there was discussion. In depth, no discussion. You mean nagiging a political on, on the issues? No? You, you think you say you think it has become like in the West, no? Very, it's very commercial because it's fashionable now. Richard, it's fashionable to wear pride shoes, rainbow colored shirt, rainbow colored socks, and everything. But I don't know if they're aware of the need to pass the law. There's a need to pass the SOGI bill. There's a need to pass the anti-discrimination law or bill because there are still people outside Metro Manila who have difficulty finding work, landing a job, exercising their profession kasi bakla sila o lesbiana. So tayong sa Metro Manila, we're like in a cocoon, no? We're comfortable here. It's very, as you say, cosmopolitan here. But outside, even just tumawid ka lang ng Batangas o sa Mindoro na lang, no? O Romblon, pagtawid mo ng, uh, o pagtawid mo ng Quezon sa Bicol, no? Iba na ang timpla dyan, no? O pagtawid mo ng Pangga, uh, not Baguio. Pagtawid mo ng Baguio sa Norte, iba na dyan, no? Uh, so, so you're saying there's a the the class country, divide, there's an urban-rural divide. You're saying there's a, there's a serious enough divide that has to be at the center of discussion. As much as you want to celebrate, you know, the capitalism of you know what i'm saying i mean nike shoes their special shoes with the rainbow yeah products i mean tim cook himself is very strong on that yeah saying, you know, hey basically 20 years stuff. ago yeah because 20 years ago i was organizing the pride marches i was the lead convener you know what i did richard i in, i i invited the left nagalit ni akbayan sa akin so i told them look you're not the only ones who should be here so I invited Bayan Muna, Anak Bawis, etc. No, the Gabriela group. I opened it up, no. And of course, the Social Democrats casting it. No, no. I said, you you cannot be the only one here. We have to Listen, include baby. everyone on this table, the indigenous people. Eh, kasi ro yung mga IP komunista naman. Ay, wala akong pakialam, bakla yan. So they should be here, no? So I was the first to invite them and telling you, no? I remember those debates. When was this like again? Sorry, when was world, this? No? 2010s ba to? When is this 20 again? years ago. Years, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. To, uh, in the year 2000, 20, year, 20 yeah, yeah. years ago because I was Medyo, 20 years ago I was convening the LGBT Pride Marches with, with several people. 
Ano yan? Talagang magkakaaway sila, yung mga the left and it's uh, different bar- permutation. Sabi ko lang kung pakialam sa away ninyo. Pag bakla, yeah. makuntahin natin dito kay lesbiana, kay akbayan pa yan, o bayan yeah. muna, o whatever. Gabriel, I want them here. O yun. Uh, Nakikinig uh, sila kasi because it's me. But now, I don't know if yeah. there's there discussions like that. Yeah, um, I want to ask another question before we go towards the end of our, our our podcast. Of course, hopefully this is just the beginning of a long set of conversations. But that I want to ask, what yeah. about these discussions about? Again, sorry for being ignoramus about this, but there are also discussions about discrimination within the community. I mean, you are uh you're the G part of LGBTQ, but there are concerns that there are other elements, maybe the T part of the who are not. getting as much recognition or support from other groups. I saw that actually over Twitter, some of our friends from the community are saying that, hey, we have to also watch out for intra-LGBT kind of tensions, and some would even say discrimination. What do you have to tell about it? Because so far, it's the G part, which has been quite spurheading, no? But but uh, how are the others doing, especially the T, the plus, the other elements of the community? You have to remember when I founded the Lad Party at least 20 years ago, it was LGBT. In the U.S., if you look at the spectrum, only gay people have... There was there were gay parties, period. Lesbian groups, period. Transgender. But in the Philippines, I brought everyone in. And in the Philippines... In Lad Lad before, even SAS was part of Lad Lad before, they formed, uh, their, their, they, they formed their transgender groups uh, from our group, no? They, They formed uh, their sasasot and the other transgenders. They came from Ladlad, no. So we gave them space. No, I tried to in- involve everyone, include everyone, which was not done in the West. But on a practical level, and I'm being very honest with you, uh, it's difficult when election campaign comes, no, because. The transgenders would quarrel among themselves. They would think it's like a beauty contest, you know. You know, the ego and the vanity would come in. Yeah. And then the lesbians would, during the campaign, away, away sila, Richard. I would be there. I was. I said, why am I putting out fires? I should be campaigning for Ladlad. Yung away ninyo, ako ang nagsusulba, nagsusolve ng mga away ninyo. And they would listen to me because maybe because I'm old, no? And I'm their leader. So it's so tiring for me to mount a campaign when you have people... Like some of them, no, I'm sorry, no. Some of the les- lesbian leaders are ex-girlfriends of each other. The past 10 years, they still hate each other, Richard. Mm. They still want to stab each other or pull each other's out eyes out of their sockets. Ano ba naman? Paano naman tayo mananalo yung mga leader na kaaway away See? Mm. So... It's difficult, but now, lad, lad, there's a new set of leaders. I'm just the... Emeritus Chairman, President, the new set of leaders are mostly gay. So I told them, open it up. Please open it up to lesbians. Merong transgender. So we're inviting the les- but lesbians. But lesbians, Richard, they have their own groups now. Eh? But the lesbians, and they know this, I've always encouraged them. I've joined the lesbian meetings. I've joined transgender meetings. Alam mo, Richard, sumali pa ako sa transgender meeting. At one point, they were going around the room mm-hmm. telling each other, What what pills are they taking? Siyempre, wala naman akong pills kasi hindi man ako transgender o kung magpapo-opera na sila. In, I was just watching them and listening because I wanted to learn. I attended many lesbian meetings and transgender mm-hmm. meetings because I wanted to be the kind of leader who would understand as many concerns as possible. Pero ngayon, yung lad-lad is being run by younger people. I just told them, you open it up. To le- yung lesbians daw kasi may sarili ng groups eh. And that's good, no? I hope mm-hmm. they run also a uh, lesbian party list. Yung transgender, uh, meron kaming transgenders, no? Bisexuals, meron din kaming bisexuals. Yung mga lesbians, uh, we're having difficulty getting them right. because the ones who are with yeah. us work for the government. I, I mean, I, I see the... They whole... cannot run. They... Yeah. Sorry for for cutting. I I see the whole unity in diversity kind of argument, but but obviously threshold eh. Kung organize kaya, 
there's there's power in number, no? I mean, and kung watak watak, baka it doesn't meet the threshold to create the kind of political impact you're looking for. Is that your reading of the situation? And 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 because yeah. my, my concern, Danton, is um, I mean, you're Danton Ramoto, you're you're the you're you're one of the pioneers and all, but but how do we make how do you make sure na there's no vacuum of leadership? I mean, the, I mean. I'm sure you're going to live for the next 100 years but what's going to happen after the next 100 years how yeah. do you that my, no, my actually that's why like, oh, we yeah. charge there's a new group I'm so happy there are so many groups and there are lot of a new set of leaders as I told you they have an election I did not run for election no because I wanted the new generation of leaders and did, did we have them I'm just telling them that we have to Again, this is just me. Number one, we have to include the poor. As many lower classes and poor as possible. Number two, we have to talk to the politicians. They always tell me, why do I talk to politicians? Because they're the ones running the show in this country. I've never accepted money from the politicians, but I've negotiated and talked and discussed with them. So I said, if you're going to run in 2025, you have to begin talking to as many political forces as possible early in the game because it's now 2023. And you have to talk to the poor. Ang dami-daming mahirap, yan pa rin magpapanalo sa atin. Marami sila. Uh, last, Danton, are, are you open to to throw your hat into the ring again? Because my sense is, iba pa rin if, if a Danton remote is running for office, right? I mean, that's the sense I get. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, I talked to you in the TV5. I mean, you uh, don't have to be alone, right? You can have a protege. Who knows? You guys might win two or three representatives on the party list yeah. on the national level. Yeah, I, 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 told, I told you in the meeting that uh, there, there's a new set of officers and there's there are funders. No, there are funders. Uh, actually, the funders I know them personally, but I told the funders, oh, you talk to Ladla, the new officers, because I'm not running, so they had the series of meetings, and the new officers. Even these are officers around the country or national officers. They talked to me. They said, sir, the founders said they will not, uh, you know, they will not help us if you're not running. <laughs> so, paano nam- I said, huh? You so you're a brand okay. yourself. Eh? You're a brand yourself. Eh? Yeah. And then and because, because we're for, for party list, Richard, the funding is 60 million. So we're talking of people, like maybe 10 or 20 people, who will give us 60 million. And they said they want to make sure that the one who will hold the money will not steal it. They can trust. Yeah, trust is everything. Yeah, yeah because me, right. before, if we've run twice, I I kept all the receipts, Richard. Yung bahay kong daming resibo eh. And I told the funders, do you want me to give you copies of the receipts to show you? No, Danton, if it's you, we yeah, don't need trust the receipts. It's the yeah, trust. we don't need the receipt. So I, I just keep on telling them that let's talk to the funders and tell them this is a collective party list. Names are not important. And uh, But as I said, if if uh, I have to make a choice and and uh, I mean, if, if the because the funders are important, <laughs> Richard, you know that. Yeah, I mean, the exactly. funders, realistic. Realistic. We're not going to win. No? We need oh, 60 oh. million. If they will say the 60 million will be released if I run, then I think I have to run. No? Kung kita mo yung pa- when show. they said that, That's you see my face. Show, when... Danton, I wanted you to say that. I wanted you to say it. <laughs> but you remember, yeah, you look at, if, you, if you can look at my face again when I said I have to run, I was like so sad. <laughs> but I have to run. I was yeah, almost on the verge of tears then. because I don't want to run. I just want to write my books, Richard. You but know that, that. I mean, that's what good leaders, usually the best leaders are the reluctant leaders who step up to the plate once the moment just comes. Wag so... sana reluctant okay, uh, once you're in office, ah. Uh. Wag kana reluctant. No, I, it's like this. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know me, no? If I say yes, I'm really, I really campaign hard, Bob. But uh, that's why I talked, <laughs> I talked to the founders again last week. No, ayaw namin kasi danto. Laki-laki ng pera, no? I mean, for them, it's not that's only 1.5 million US dollars, but, but still, for me, it's a lot of money. But they said, we, we, we want you because... And I said, why? Because, they, of course, they want 
help with their businesses later, regulation of the law, lobbying, businesses. lobbying. I'm yeah, sure lobbying, you can do the job of hundred know. congressmen. I think you're you such know. a good political. Yeah. <laughs> And they told me, ikaw pa naman kasi mabait ka, kausap mo naman lahat, saka hindi ka nagagalit. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> you know how it is, Richard, no? I mean, it's hard, no? But if I have no choice, as I told you earlier, yeah, I even told you, remember, that I'll consult with you. <laughs> yeah, time. no, I mean, Danton, I mean, if this is a platform, I mean, we had people who declared, I think John O'Gibbs said here that he might run for president down the road. I mean, like, Ikaw naman, nag-interview lang tayo, pinda na ako. Yeah, but, but I think, Danton, this is an interview time has come. Mm -hmm. My goodness, one hour passed like a breeze. I know you have a show coming up soon. Yeah. So I hope we can have you in studio soon for my other Yeah, I'll, I'll message you tomorrow. Yes, because please. I'm, I'm getting a driver to go yeah. there because... Danton, uh, you know, we need you because we want to talk about Chris Aquino. We want to talk about Robin oh, Patina. Yeah. We want to talk about... Oh, ikaw talaga? Yung mga pwede oh, mo sabihin. Sige. Yung mga pwede mo sabihin. We, we want to yeah, talk... Yeah, let's get... I'll your message books, you after my show. Yes. Yeah. Danton, please I'll do it after your book, huh? Pairam ng coffee. Yeah. I would love to. I'll give you a copy. Please, please. I'll give yeah. you a copy. Thank you so much. You know, Richard, you ask difficult questions, but I answered you honestly. Uh. I mean, wala akong... Kasi nung alingan na sinabi Anton, I have yun, no eh. notes, nothing. This is all from my heart. You see, I have no scripts. Even, even the admission that I have to run, it was said with so much sadness. If you can go back to the video, you can see, oh, I have no choice but to run. Let's go! Danto, let's go! You can do this. Kailangan ka! Oh. And Danto, we'll Ramoto. talk about it. We'll Para talk sa bayan. Para sa bayan. Oh, yeah, we'll have a... <laughs> We'll have another interview. I have to go because my show... I, I, I owe you also, so I, I need to be on your show. Let's discuss geopolitics and hopefully we yeah. can have you in studio. I, I can see the audience are super happy on YouTube, on Facebook. They're super happy. They're, I think a lot of people are elated to hear your reluctant para sa bayan moment. Ay, naku, ayoko naman. Richard, <laughs> I just want to, you know me, I just want to write I know, I, but that's why Hindi I... Nga I, I ako hindi nga ako lumalabas ng bahay. You're the first interviewer. Nagpapa-interview lang ako sa TV5 kasi istasyon natin yan. Ay, exactly. Ito lang ang... Mga kapatid. Pagalitan ako ng MVP. I'll see you But soon. you're the first outside interviewer I said yes to. Oh, I'll see you this week. May kapatid week, tayo, so hindi ako outside, you know. <laughs> hindi na nga, kaya nga pumayag na ako. Oh, okay, let's get good. it. I'll, I'll message it. you later. Yes, please. Thank you so much. Everyone looking forward to your next next interviews too. Maraming salamat and Thank God bless. Thank you.